thought you frown upon live bait. You kind of snooty last time I suggested. <laughs> <laughs> big shrimp, big fish. Is that how it works? If we don't catch anything, <laughs> we're cooking shrimp today, folks. <laughs> Don't lose your inner Creole. I'm Chef John Besh, owner of the Besh Restaurant Group. The whole idea of our restaurant group is really sustainability, the rebirth and uh, revitalization of New Orleans. La Provence is just a gem. This, is, this was my neighborhood restaurant. I grew up a couple bayous that way. I worship the man that used to own the place, Constantine Caragiorgio. When I had a chance to work for him, I learned as much as I could. He sent me to these uh, great escapes every summer, working in places that he wanted me to experience so that I would understand the fundamentals and foundation of basic Provencal cooking. And that's what we're really building on today. Just before Chris died, I purchased the restaurant from him just to make sure that it didn't go out of business. I told him that I would honor his restaurant and from that point, he passed away a day later, just waiting to be rid of it. Today we woke up really early, went out fishing with uh, Deadly Dudley. He's a local legend. He's the guy that really knows how to fish Lake Pontchartrain better than anybody. What kind of fish do you want to catch? Just whatever bites or yeah, pretty much? Whatever you want to do. Chef Brian Landry. How are you? Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Uh, Brian Landry is not only a great chef, but he's a partner of mine, and he and I own a board and restaurant together. Y'all ready? Yes, yeah, sir. Let's go. Deadly Dudley, the man, the myth, the legend. I don't know about that. Man. Come on. He's the guy that likes to fish. Dudley's like a fish doctor. He knows what fish feel like on the rod before he even brings them up. What, am, what, uh, what do I have? What do I have? Quick. Go look at it. <laughs> How are you going to cook it? How would I cook that fried? Speckled trout. How do you like to cook them? Fried. They're good to eat now. Really. How do you like to eat them? Fried. How do you like to cook sharks? Fried. <laughs> you wonder why I had heart problems. <laughs> you gotta love a guy like Dudley. We took the sheep head, we sliced those up. Then we just brought them back to La Provence and we started cooking. Went ahead and fried them just the way Dudley would do it. The Dudley style fish. Right out of the fryer. Dudley, here's to you. That's right. And your cardiologist. <laughs> but that's the old timey lake skiff right there. That's the way to do it. The entire basin area is where both Brian and I grew up fishing. Yeah, we used to walk out on these trestles, maybe like every 50 feet, there'd be these big beams that kind of stuck out on the side. And when the train would come by, you'd see the train or feel the train coming and you climb down. Finally, the kid from down the street got smashed by a train. We stopped, we, we stopped fishing from the trestle after that. That's bad. Poor fella. <laughs> oh yeah, beautiful redfish. Sportsman's paradise, baby. I probably Kubion there. We scaled and gutted the redfish and made a redfish Kubion out of that. This is one of those dishes that really kind of speaks to all the different cultures that came here to New Orleans to settle. And so everything from West Africa to the French to far-flung influences, even like the, the um, Croatians that came that now run our oyster industry really displayed in this dish, kind of like a gumbo. It's just like the Jesse tree of Louisiana cooking. This is like liquid gold. You don't waste any of it. You need a big loaf of French bread. You just want to jump in there, sop it all up. I'm going to take these shrimp, some of that crab meat right over the top. Eating this with a little bit of rice, actually a whole lot of rice. You need lots of rice. All that gravy is unbelievable. I mean, this is like cooking old school. This is the way I grew up, and this is why I cook the way I cook today.
I'm not a, a real big fish eater. I'm an oyster eater now. From before I go fish in the morning, I eat two or three dozen. When I get back from, I eat two or three dozen. Right before I eat dinner, I eat two or three dozen. You know, like five times a day, I'll eat two or three dozen. And I end up, I end up eating three sacks of oysters. That's what we're looking for right there. Speckled trout, oh, almost non-existent. I like speckled trout size you cut them. We always fry them and it's because they're out here to eat a lot of bogeys, they get that oily taste. I think that's why I like sheep dead fish. You know, eat the barnacles and they eat crabs and shrimp and they don't eat fish. They don't eat no kind of fish. I like to, I only saute them. I only, you know, it's trout manier, trout almondine. Yeah. We made one uh, trout almondine, which that was a dish that my mom would cook. Called speckled trout, bring it home. Mom would cook it and I would smell the almonds in brown butter throughout the house. I'll tell you a story about fish in the Marine Corps. I was going to war and uh, one of the little meetings that we had just before going into combat, and so the first thing they tell us, toasted almonds are certainly signs of a chemical attack. And if you smell this, you'll probably be dead in about 15 minutes. I'm thinking like, that freaking ruins it because that was the smell that are closely associated with <laughs> with mom's favorite uh, trout dish, the trout almondine. And that is what mom would do every time I caught a speckled trout. Why don't we do some flounder Pontchartrain? Been fishing in Lake Pontchartrain and Lake Bourne all my life. If it comes from about 90 miles around New Orleans, we're bringing it in. Meyer lemons from down the river, chanterelle mushrooms from the Honey Island Swamp. Crab meat on top of anything tastes good in Louisiana. And we've always said, if you wanted to sell it in the restaurant, saute it and put crab on top. Cooking with what you have, treating it with respect, and using every part and piece. And that's what I love most about what we did today. We went out, we caught the fish, we brought them back, and then each fish we cooked the way they really wanted to be cooked, the way that their, their flesh kind of dictates. We're cooking what we have locally, respecting it, and also respecting the tradition because this area has the only indigenous urban cuisine left in America. So I love the fact that we get to preserve some of that.